Good morning, and welcome to St. Francis Episcopal Church on this, the third Sunday of Advent. It's December 17th, 2023. Time is flying towards Christmas. We're delighted to have you with us. The service will start in just a few moments.
Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Francis Episcopal Church here in Greensboro, North Carolina. I'm Father Milton Williams. I am the rector here at St. Francis. And on behalf of the clergy staff, the wardens of this parish, the vestry, every member of this congregation, I worship, I, I worship you today. Yes. <laughs> Oh, or let me slow that one down, Charlie. <laughs> I worship you today. I welcome you to worship today. Yes, we are all worshiping together today here at St. Francis on this, the third Sunday of this holy season um, of Advent. And we know it will be third Sunday because Charlie and his family are going to come up here and they will light the first, second, and third candle, the rose candle, indicating indeed it is the third Sunday in this season of the season of Advent. If you're worshiping with us and online, or you consider yourself a guest, if you're worshiping online, you should see on your screen about right now a QR code, that little black and white box, I think. Mark, I think it's on that side. I'm, I'm like the weatherman. I think you should see this box right here. <laughs> on your screen about right now. If you click on that box, um, it will take you to a place where you find a visitor's card, the order of worship for today, and an opportunity for you to make a financial gift to the life and ministry here at St. Francis. Uh, by way of announcement, by way of announcement, a, a very big thank you for everyone who contributed to the Santa for Seniors uh, project, the Santa for Seniors project, if you made a donation to that uh, a couple weeks ago, thank you, and that was sponsored by the Senior Resources of Guilford. It was a success and much thanks to you for that. If you remember last year, uh, when we, well really that was this year, it was this year, epiphany of this year, it, we had a project by where we gathered you, you gathered uh, and brought together school supplies for a neighborhood elementary school here. We will do that again um, for this coming uh, season of Epiphany. We will have that celebration on January 7th. That's the second Sunday of January. January 7th, as you did last year, you brought your gifts forward. We will do that. And the proceeds of all the supplies will go to Irving Park Elementary School here in Greensboro. I will tell you why Irving Park. It is going to Irving Park, because listen carefully, because Irving Park was the place where the founders of this congregation met 70 years ago. This coming year, 2024, St. Francis Parish will celebrate its 70th anniversary. So in many ways, this is the beginning of a year-long celebration of our life together as a parish here at St. Francis. So that's why I know you are excited and you'll do all you can to make sure this chancel will be full of things that we will submit to and give to and donate to Irving Park Elementary School again the second Sunday in, in January. And we have these cards here. You see them in the pews. If you have not already done so, please make your donation for the flowering and the uh, greening of the parish for the celebration of Christmas. Speaking of Christmas, next Sunday at the 10.30, are you following me on the camera? Is the, is the camera following me? I'm walking this way. I'm walking this way. <laughs> is the camera following me? So next Sunday will be the fourth Sunday of Advent, the fourth Sunday at the 10 o'clock service. It is not Christmas Eve until sundown when you come back to church next Sunday at 5.30, okay? So when you come next Sunday, we will have the pageant celebrating the fourth Sunday of Advent, and then in the evening at 5.30, we will be in with the celebration of music and the procession for Christmas Eve. That's a lot going on, but you know what? That's who we are, that's who the church is, and it is this time of year. And so now, now we will have the lighting of the Advent wreath by the Smith family. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to 
Today is the third Sunday of Advent, and we will light the candle of love. In their old age, God gave to Zechariah and Elizabeth a son called John. John spoke to the people bravely in the desert, denying his own comforts and prepared to die for what he believed in. John taught that we should share what we have with others, treat each other kindly, and show God's love. He did this because he cared for the people and wanted them to repent and find God's forgiveness. Let us pray. <laughs> love is like a candle shining in a dark place. As we look at the light of this candle, we celebrate the love we have in Christ. Let us pray. Lord God, your, your witness, witness, John the Baptist, grew up strong in spirit and, and prepared, prepared people, people for the coming of the Lord. Lord. He loved your, your people. people and baptized them in the, in the river, river Jordan, Jordan to wash away their sins. sins. Help, Help us to have the same love that, that we would be witnesses to him and, and spread the good news of your love. love. As, As Christmas, Christmas draws closer, closer day by day, by day help us to be ready to welcome, welcome him. him. Amen. Amen.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint heart spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice I hate robbery and wrongdoings. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. 
for as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the word of prophets but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord From John's Gospel this morning, we heard these words. John said to the priests and Levites, Among you stands one whom you do not know. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> this morning, I would be remiss if I did not take a moment and share my thanks to all of you for the many, many birthday wishes I received last week. It meant a lot and still means a lot today to share these moments of life with you all. And to those who asked for a sermon on aging this week, <laughs> I'll have to get back to you on that one. Um, that will be for another year. This week, this week, we heard these words from John's Gospel. Among you stands one whom you do not know. These are John's words to the religious authorities who came to him. These were the words spoken to the priests and the Levites, and these are John's words spoken for us today. When reading and thinking about this passage, I was reminded of a seminary class that I took. The name of the class was John, the man of the fourth gospel. It was taught by a world-renowned Johannine scholar, Dr. Andrew Arterberry. The major question we were to ask ourselves in this class was, what was John actually doing? And what was John actually trying to say in his gospel? You all know this. John's gospel is so different than the other three. So what is so special or peculiar about this gospel compared to the others? In our class, we often asked ourselves, what if John is saying this instead of that? And today's lesson was one of those moments, one of those what-if moments. Often these words of John are read and understood as, as criticism or, or as disapproval. It's as if John is saying, I've been pointing to the one this whole time, and all you seem to see is the end of my finger. I've been talking and talking about the one out here in the wilderness, but you aren't listening. You're not looking and you're not listening. You do not know the one who stands among you. Well, what if this 
instead of that? What if John's words are neither criticism or rebuke? What if his words are an invitation to wonder, to imagine, to consider anew the possibilities of who this one might be? You see, John himself did not know the one standing among them. In subsequent verses not included in our passage, John says twice, I myself did not know him. You see, John only recognized the one when the Spirit descended and stayed on him. So who is this one? What do you think? Who is John referring to? Most of us would probably say Jesus. That's the usual answer. That's the usual way of hearing John's words. Jesus is the answer I've most often given. And it's not a wrong answer. But that's the beauty of Scripture. The beauty of Scripture. Because often there is more than one correct answer. So what if Jesus is but one right answer? What might others be? Today, let's rethink this usual answer. Is Jesus the one and only, or could there be others? Have there been others before Jesus? Will there be others after Jesus? Let's hear John's words in a larger context. Could this one who stands among you be me? Could it be you? Could it be a guest that shows up here on a Sunday morning, or maybe a stranger in the street? What if John is not referring to one as a numerical limitation or an exclusion of all others? What if the one is the standard? What if the one is the model of many? Thinking this way is is very Greek, and, and we know that John was certainly writing to a Greek audience. This explains why John writes with a round and round and round reasoning. Think about this for a minute. One person representing the many. Christian tradition has never held that the one and the many are mutually exclusive. It's actually to the contrary. This is a really important part of our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We say that every single week. What if John is saying to us that this one has always been among us and is still among us? That would actually be a more literal reading of our Greek translation. The grammar suggests that this one has stood among us in the past and still continues to stand among us today. Remember, remember that God does not function in the temporal, but the eternal. Not only, not only that, not only does it suggest that this is the one who stood among those in the scripture and is also standing among us today, it also suggests that we did not recognize the one then and we do not recognize the one now now. They did not recognize the one standing among them then. It's very clear. So we might not recognize the one standing among us now. And that leads us to a really important question. Why? Why don't we recognize the one who stands among us? It isn't necessarily for a lack of faith. I know you all to be faithful people. I wonder, I wonder if it might be too much faith, if that's a thing. Maybe the greatest barrier to seeing the divine presence among us is that we already have an idea or an image of who that one is or should be and what that one should look like and should be doing. In other words, we think we have a complete understanding of who God is and what Jesus looks like 
and we stick with what we think we know. We stick with what we think we know. We can't see the one because our expectations of the face of God are not met. Those we encounter do not fit neatly into our Jesus-shaped boxes. We encount- those we encounter do not think or believe like we imagine the heart of God to be. And more often than not, we see and hear in such a way that only confirms what we already believe. I am so guilty of this myself. So often we surround ourselves with things we agree with. We listen to podcasts that align with how we see the world. We follow news outlets that confirm what we believe. We miss seeing the one because we think we know exactly who the one is and exactly what they think, believe, and understand truth to be. We think we know exactly what the one should look like. We think we know exactly who the one is. Listen to this this interaction in, in Father Anthony DeMello's book, The Awareness. It makes the point all too well. Henry, how you've changed. You were so tall and and you've grown so short. You were so well built and you've, you've grown so thin. You were so fair and you've become so dark. What happened to you, Henry? And then Henry says, well, well, I'm not Henry, I'm, I'm Tom. (laughs) To which the person then replies, oh, you changed your name too. But you see, that's exactly what the priests and the Levites are doing with John. They come to him with the usual answers of who he should be. Well, you're the Messiah, or you're Elijah, or you're a prophet. But John won't allow them to do that to him. The one doesn't fit in their expectations or their categories They do not know the one who stands among them. And sometimes we just don't see the one standing among us. Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, we see new faces in our pews. Sunday after Sunday, just just look around. There are new faces here today. Did you know Did you know that we have had over 10,000 online views from our sermon snippets that get posted every week? In one week, 10,000 people view a short snippet of the sermons at St. Francis. How often do we see and meet these new faces? How many times do we let others know about the wonderful things going on here and then invite them to tune in to see what we're all about? If the new face isn't a person with young kids or a young family themselves, we get all worried and we say, well, we need new families. And that's not wrong. But where we miss the mark is we don't see the faces who are new here and celebrate that they're here with us. Those people are beloved who come to us each week. And and know this, if you are visiting in a pew today or you are watching from online, you are welcome here and you are most certainly one of God's beloved. You see, this kind of thing happens all the time. John is not announcing something new. He says as much. We heard it last week. I am the one crying out in the wilderness. Make, way, make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said. Before John, there was Isaiah. And don't think John was the first to see the Spirit depend, descend upon the one. It also came upon Isaiah today in our readings. Isaiah writes, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Wherever these spirit kinds of things are happening, they point to the one who stands among us. 
And more often than not, we only recognize the one in retrospect. Think for a moment. Think for a moment. Who has been one that stood among you and made the divine present? When have you looked back and seen that one doing some kind of spirit thing in your life? When have you been that one for another? Among you stands one whom you do not know. So who is this one? Who do we think this one is? Who is John referring to? Yes, it's Jesus. Yes, it was John. And yes, it was Isaiah. And yes, it's both the new and the familiar faces. And yes, it's those who watch online. And yes... Yes, it's you and me. And that is not a negation or diminishment of who Jesus is or what Jesus has done. It is rather a fulfillment of who Jesus is and what Jesus has done. It is the incarnational ministry of Jesus come on earth as it is in heaven. I am not saying anything that Jesus himself has not already said. Later in John's gospel, Jesus says, Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater than these. Isn't that what we prayed for in our college today? Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. This one who stands among us is the stirred up power of God. As my grandmother would say, the one who is among us is a spoon in the hand of God. Among you stands one whom you do not know. Among us. Among us stands one, stands many, whom we do not know. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Pleading for God's gifts of a renewing spirit, let us offer our prayers to God, saying, Lord, have mercy. That our life may be songs of praise and thanksgiving, rising from joyful hearts and proclaiming in every word we speak and gesture, we make that God fills us with holy presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, that all those in our world held in captivity or any form of slavery may find liberation from the chains that bind them and new freedom for their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may accept with courage God's anointing of our lives to share in the divine mission of rest recue for the word, word, bringing justice and joy to all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may reverently offer in service to the world the ministry of light, which we hold in fragile human hands, the sharing in the saving work of Christ, the light, let us pray to the Lord. That the mercy of God, which lasts from age to age, may wash over us and bless us and stir up in us the bold courage to be its faithful prophets in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who need our prayers and whom we now remember. For them and for ourselves, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that those who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord we give thanks for the altar flowers in the church given to the glory of God and in celebration of the birthdays of my wife. Tina Rogers, and our Savior, Jesus Christ, given by Joe Rogers, and in loving memory of Frank L. Nash, given by his wife, A. Rawia Nash, daughters Nyla, Nate, Joy, and son Noel Frank, and 11 grandchildren. Let us pray to the Lord. Send the Spirit of Jesus upon us, O God, that we may be your songs of peace and joy in this world. We pray in the name of the one who is our peace and joy, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now, walk in love as Christ loved us 
and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord.
Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all of our company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fulfillment of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, 
and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Francis, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. the bread of heaven and amen, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, keep thee unto everlasting life, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May you, who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer, at his second advent be rewarded with unending life and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.